don't just hope you're going to dig yourself out of the hole, like make a small new choice to move forward and maybe notice what that choice can be. So that can be your, your intention for maybe even the next week or the next day. Hey there, this is Unburdened by Hope, the podcast that helps you harness your possibility and feel your purpose. I'm your host, Erin Cummings. Here, we're breaking free from the chains of hope and unlocking the power of inspiration within. Get ready to ignite your soul because we're diving deep into the art of letting go, embracing the unknown, and creating a life unburdened by the limitations of hope. Together, we'll uncover the secrets to finding purpose, fueling our passions, and crafting a vibrant existence that sets our hearts on fire. So, are you ready to burn it down what's no longer serving you and step into a life driven by possibility? Let's dive in, my friends, and unleash our boundless potential. Welcome back. We are at episode 12 in the Unburned by Hope podcast by Erin Cummings, myself. Uh, huge shout out to, honestly, the podcast team. Without them, I would be nothing and I would do nothing. And I would have no accountability or um, hope at all. Yeah, here, here there it is. Um, so thanks to the podcast team for all they do. Um, I uh, have a really awesome, funny story for you today, per usual. Uh, It's all about taking the option for change. It's just at the end of a yoga class is always my favorite because it's really the nap. Like why, why don't all aspects of working out have that? I, I don't know. Like the fact that it hasn't caught on yet is truly just like unimaginable, but you know, the end of a yoga class, if you've never done yoga before, the end of a yoga class, you get like this awesome. If you're at an awesome studio like mine, <laughs> you get an extended nap. Some studios are like, cool, two minutes and you're done. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Uh, we encourage the very long, uh, the very long nap. But at the end of the yoga class, I really like the symbolisms of like waking up after the class, rolling over to your side which is like child sleeping pose, like on your side. And I always kind of see it as the opportunity to make a new choice. So like if you had a crazy morning and you came in and you did a yoga class, then you roll over onto your side and then you have the opportunity to like make a new choice and start over. It's um, like, that's kind of how I, how I see it and how I visualize it. Um, And this little, this little story about a man whose name is not lucky uh, is, is about just that. So I, this happened a while ago and I, if you're a member of the studio, I actually did like a little blog post about it in the blog that I write for the studio. But so there is this really awesome coffee and like pastry and just sweets place by my house, which conveniently is located also directly next to one of my children's school. It used to be both my kids, but now only one kid goes there. And like, I'm a, I'm a monster when it comes to this place. So I was highly caffeinated during the school year. And now over the summer, I'm still really highly caffeinated, but they have this insane, like matcha lemonade that literally like I can no longer have an afternoon without. And it is, it's becoming a problem. Um, but that is really for my therapist and I to figure out. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, there is this really awesome, like local, uh, you can get coffee, pastries, ice cream, like really awesome, uh, little, little shop there. And for my house, it's walkable, like a lot of the other homes where I live, but here's the thing. It is a neighborhood hangout place. So it's not just like people like me who are completely addicted to caffeine. It's also like all the neighborhood kids, all the other moms, all the other people that live in the neighborhood and like, and people, it's like a destination place. So like people travel from other areas to go to this coffee shop. So it's, this happened during last school year. So I think it was like a Thursday or Friday and this place is busy. There's no drive through. I think you can order like pre-order and get to go. But for the most part, like, you know, that like, if you go have a coffee, go get a coffee here, like you're going to wait in line. Like that's just, it just is how it is. And so it was like a Thursday or Friday at like 
I would say close to 9 a.m. And I was going to go get my Americano because that's at the time what I was drinking from said place. And of course I pull up. Um, I drove there because I'm lazy slash it was hot slash I was on my way to work. So I drove, pulled up. Oh, there's a line standard. Cool. I'll wait. So I go stand in line. Well, I'm waiting there, waiting there. And this guy, Mr. Not Lucky, Not Lucky Steve, he um, stands behind me. And in the line, okay, just picture this, is like the standard neighborhood mom group. (laughs) They've got the strollers. They've got their mom gear. They've got, you know, the nanny. And then they've got like the kids, the chaos kids. And then it's like, you know, they're just like, little, little Stevenson, what do you want to eat? And it's like, dude, like, how do you not know your order? Like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Like, how do you not know your order? Well, they do know the order. And I also know as a mom of a particular, like a kid with very particular tastes, like if you order something in which they did not ask for, it's Meltdown City. Like, I get it. I get it. I get it. But also like, let's keep the line moving, right? So the the gaggle of moms is like at the very front and they're situating the order and they're taking a while and it's fine and everyone's fine and we're all in line and we know we have to wait except for, you know, not so lucky Steve behind me. And he's huffing and puffing. Like he started inching closer and closer and closer to me like I could feel it you know you can like feel it behind you and here's the thing one of the great things that came out of COVID was like spatial awareness um for most people but you know unlucky Steve here I I don't think he learned I learned about that uh in COVID so there comes to be a point in which I can feel him breathing on me, which is like, okay, bro, you're clearly too close at this point. And then I can hear him muttering under his breath. So the ladies are there, they're ordering, and he starts getting like louder and louder. Listen, I'm, I'm very honest. Most people who know me know that I'm very honest. I will give a very honest reaction. I usually say what I'm thinking. However, I have learned boundaries and candor and softness and empathy and all of these things. So as funny as it is to like, you know, kind of poke fun at this little gaggle of moms, like they're all there together. They're having fun. They're just having a good time. It's not bothering me. It's not bothering anyone in line except for the guy behind me. And he starts like muttering under his breath. And then it becomes like clearly, clearly um, to where you can like actually hear it. And so he is now telling the mom group to like actually hurry. Like he's like, hurry up. Like that's what he says. He's like, hurry up. And it's like obviously very aggressive. So mom group completes order, moves off to the side. They're dragging little Steven, Stevenson Thompson Joe off, you know, and before the lady, it's like the gaggle of moms, another lady, third lady, and then me and then him, the gaggle of moms move. And then next lady goes up before she even, I think before like the neurotransmitters move from like her neurons move from like her brain to her, the muscles in her legs. Like he already had told her like, move up, move up, move up. And it, it was like, before she could even register, like to actually lift her foot up off the ground and then like place it down. And, um, we all kind of were like, what, you know, okay, like it's fine. So then he's like, clearly even more irritated um and everyone had like she knew what she wanted she ordered so now there's the lady at the counter that's currently ordering a lady in front of me me and then like this guy behind me so the lady in front of me clearly can't take it anymore and it's her turn to now think about moving her foot forward and he does the same thing to her move up move up. 
And she just turns around very nice. Like, oh my God, so nice. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't, I could have never done it. (laughs) There's no way, no way. She turns around and tells the guy, hey, Mr. Krabby Pants. Well, she didn't say that, but I, that's what I would have said. She turns around and she says, hey, you know, you're clearly in a really big hurry. I, you know, you can totally cut in front of me. And I just like looked at her and I was like, yeah, sister, good job. You know? So she gave him the option to cut in front and order and get his order done and get out of the way. And you know what the fuck he said? No, I couldn't believe it. Like, first of all, uh, yo, bro, you got the opportunity to cut in line and you didn't take it. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, you're you have that much time that like you're late and then like you, you have an in to not be so late. And then you're like, no, I'm good. Like, that's the thing. I, I could, I just, I could not believe it. And then he says, well, I'm already 45 minutes late to work and it's not that big of a deal, but then he's still like getting closer and closer and closer to me. And he's still muttering under his breath and he's still telling the lady who offered him the spot to come to the front of the line, he still told her to hurry up while she was ordering. Like, I couldn't believe it. And then it's finally like his turn. So he did the same thing to me. Like she ordered and then I took my time. I was like, yo, bro, like you have the option and you said no. And you know what? Like, sorry, my foot fell asleep. I live in slow motion now. Like you're just, this is how, this is how it is. So I ordered and then finally he comes up to order. So obviously you have to wait a second because that's how coffee shops work. You have to wait for your coffee. Um, you have to wait a second to like get your coffee. And he's like, I need you to hurry up and make my coffee. Like he like, he like said that. So I just want to take a moment to pause here just like quickly to discuss just a little, a little bit of this. So this guy is 45 minutes late to work. He was most likely at home where he probably most likely has coffee. And then list like finance unlucky Steven also most likely has a coffee bar or someone that can go get him coffee at work. And if you're 45 minutes late to work, like 45 minutes, like he's an older guy, um, the likelihood of you getting in trouble is probably pretty slim. Like he probably has never had anyone yell at him about being late to work. And I would say the last 10 years, like it, like, come on, you know? So I think it's like, he would have rather sat there and complained and been the victim of his tardy lateness than just taking one of the other 92 options available for him. Like he he would rather be in a shitty ass mood and then make all of us be in a shitty ass mood. And he could have just cut the line and he could have just changed his whole day and he could have stopped muttering. And he he's just like stealing the energy around him. You know what I mean? Like he's just like sucking it all up and taking it all away. And he would rather just like be like that. What's that dirty kid from like Charlie Brown? Like he'd rather be that kid in the line than like clean his act up. Like I, I just, I truly couldn't believe it. He chose, he truly chose to just like, stay stuck and get attention for his lateness instead of taking an action for a different outcome. He, this is the thing that I'm talking about where I like equated it to the, like the beginning of this podcast where I was talking about, you know, in yoga, you go in for your rest, you roll over, you wake up, you make a new choice, but like home dog did not make a new choice. Like he just chose to continue in his quote unquote, we talked about last uh, one of the other podcasts, like default way of being, of just like being the victim. uh, Woe is me. I'd rather get, you know, the attention of the complaining 
the complaining cookie of like, oh, you know, everyone will just like, I'll get to be priority because I'm running late. But it's also like, no, you don't. I, I, I literally like, I am still shocked. I'm shocked to this day that like he chose to not skip the line after being late. And I, because I'm of my personality and like how I am, if I'm presented with those opportunities, like I always take them. I always kind of see them as like, I always joke that they're like a hundred dollar bill moments. Like if a hundred dollar bill flies in front of you and you opt to not take it, like what is wrong with you? And so it's like, Two people come up to a four-way stop and the other person pauses too long. Sorry, bro. You can't decide. I'm going. Here's my $100 moment to like skip the line. Go ahead. Um, I do think like you shouldn't complain to skip the line. Like don't don't take this podcast as showing up as like unlucky Steve. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to go to that coffee bar and I'm going to stand in line and I'm going to make everyone else miserable so that I can skip the line. That's my new choice. <laughs> um, I did not say that. I did not not say that. What I'm saying is like, He could have restarted his entire day. So like if this was 9 a.m., that means he's got this whole rest of the day in which he's going to be in like a shitty mood from running late all day. And all he had to do was say, yes, thanks. Um, I'm in this huge hurry. I totally mismanaged my time. I really appreciate it. And then it's like, boom, new choice was made. Day has changed blah de blah 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 i think that's the the like honestly the fuck moment the fuck hope moment here is like when we all have days like that right where like everything is going wrong maybe you can't see the line skipping moment right like you can't see maybe see what that new choice is but when presented you can see it. You just have to dig yourself out of the hole. So the fuck hope moment here is like, you can't just hope that like, you can't just hope that someone's going to also offer you to skip the line either. Like that was a a golden hundred dollar moment, right? But you can't just hope that's always offered. Like you can try to go to the coffee shop and you can be all crappy in line and, and maybe no one will offer it to you. That's the other thing. So you can't just assume there's going to be an option presented either. So you have to just make the new choice. If there's no option presented, then that's what your option is. Then it's like, okay, well, now no one's letting me skip the line. And so maybe I should just stop complaining to everyone in front of me because this peanut gallery isn't going to freaking do anything. Like there's going to be no policy change because of me complaining to the person in front of me and the person behind me. Also, I'm not complaining to them. Like he was not actually complaining to me, like I, as much as I was like listening, but like, we weren't having a dedicated conversation. Like he was complaining at me. Like he was just like launching his complaints to like the back of my head and the back of my neck and then the back of my shirt. And it was just like, dude, I can feel each of these. If you could fucking stop, that'd be great. And like, he could have easily just been like, you know what, maybe I'll stop complaining and just hold myself accountable for being late. And then my new action moving forward is maybe my new choice to make is maybe just skipping the whole line next time. What, what a revelation. If you're 45 minutes late to work, uh, maybe just don't go, maybe just don't get coffee. I don't know. I don't know. I was all worked up about this whole situation, obviously, because we're still talking about it. But like, I just think that once we go, once we start the downward spiral effect, of like the complaining and the woe is me and the, all of this stuff. And then we get, we try and like loop all these other people in. And then you don't even like someone holds their hand out and you're like, no. And then you just like, keep going in a circle of complaining. And you're like, whoa, dude, like, don't you see, don't you see all you had to do was like make a new choice, which was to take the offer of skipping the line. I couldn't believe it. I absolutely couldn't believe it. Believe it. So as you're moving through your week this week, I think that's a good thing to like maybe notice is when you start that, you know, it all comes back to presence and awareness and focus. And when you start that, like if you become 
on Lucky Steve, late, what should we, I should have been calling him like late Larry. Damn. I really missed that opportunity. Um, we're going to, let's just rename him quickly. Uh, so formerly known late Larry, formerly known as, uh, Steve, unlucky Steve, <laughs> you know, uh, late Larry, formerly known as unlucky Steve, you can, as if you're noticing him, right? Like if you're noticing that all you're doing is just complaining about something and you're not taking any action and nothing that anyone is doing is like honestly helping or making you change your mind or no one cares. Like that's the other thing I think that maybe was probably relevant to this story is like, I didn't really care that he was late and the lady behind me didn't really care that he was late and the lady in front of me didn't care he was late. We just cared that he kept complaining and kept being so rude and aggressive. And that's what the, that's what made us change our behavior. And so I think with that, it's like, if you're constantly just complaining about the same thing over and over and over, and you have no awareness of like, what's really going on around you, like it's time to make a new choice. And that might mean skip the line, skip to the front of the line, or just like, don't get in the line at all. So as you're moving through this week, don't just hope, don't just hope you're going to dig yourself out of the hole like make a small new choice to move forward and maybe notice what that choice can be. So that can be your, your intention for maybe even the next week or the next day. Like if you get into an argument with someone this week, like you can make the new choice to move on, forgive, forget whatever you want to do, right? Contact them, say, Hey, it got out of line, right? Uh, you always have that choice. So as you're moving through your week this week, really focus on creating what your new choice is and um, don't be like late Larry, formerly known as unlucky Steve. Okay. Thanks you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Stay courageous, capable, and strong as you're making your choices. Thanks for listening to Unburdened by Hope. Go to your favorite podcast app, hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. If you got something out of our show, I'd love to hear from you. Send me your favorite takeaway or any questions you may have to info at aaronccummings.com. You might even just hear the answer in a future episode. Remember, you are capable, you are courageous, and it's up to you to create what's possible.